Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Montana, and I'm going to share with you the workflow for the Atlantis custom base abutment. Now, this starts with an abutment, and this is a custom made titanium abutment that is designed for screw retained crowns. We are able to have crowns made to fit really perfectly to the abutment because it's made from a core file. And then the crown is combined with the abutment to create a screw retain restoration. Now, the crown may be cemented out of the mouth, which is great because we can eliminate the problem with cement contamination that we often will have when we try to cement a crown in the mouth. So the custom base is just that, it's custom. It is an abutment that can be completely designed by your laboratory technician or yourself if you want to. So there's control over the general shape of the abutment, the margin position, the emergence through the tissue, how tall the abutment is, how wide it is, and so forth. So there's the ability to create what is really this the ideal abutment for any restoration that's a single tooth replacement. Now in this little short video, I'm showing how I modified the shape of an abutment. I was able to alter the margin width, the shoulder size, the height, the width of the abutment itself. And in this case, I wanted to have a little thicker ceramic for the restoration so it'd be stronger. So I created a broader shoulder. Now, screw retaining has obviously become the go-to approach for restoring single implants. And our concern has been that we have a risk of cement contamination with a regular cemented approach. So we would prefer to be screw retaining. But also there is the possibility that with a cemented type of restoration that a screw can loosen. And if it does, you really can't remove the crown. You have to cut the crown off and start all over again. So screw retaining offers these advantages. Now, when this became sort of the vogue in, in terms of restoration, one of the abutments that came on the market was the tie base abutment. And it's a nice little abutment that helps us in very simple situations. But as a stock abutment, it has some real limitations. And among those are when you have a tall crown. You know, this is a very short abutment. And if you have a tall crown and it has to go deep into tissue, well, if the ceramic material, which is limited to zirconia, is too thin and we have a very tall abutment or tall crown on a short abutment, the risk of fracturing of the, of the ceramic becomes greater. However, with the custom base, we have control over the height of the abutment. We can make it taller if we need to make it taller. So we don't have such a great expanse of the ceramic and we're able to control the thickness of the weakest part of, the part of the restoration, which is, of course, the ceramic in the thin areas. It doesn't have to be that way anymore. We have control over that. Now, to limit breakage problems in a tie base, you really have to over contour the ceramic in the deeper areas. And unfortunately, this is a, a restoration that is a painful experience for our patients because we remove our healing abutment. We don't have a provisional in place because we're using a stock abutment. And when we go to seat, we are distending tissue and creating pressure, and it's very painful for the patient. With a custom base, instead, we are able to develop an emergence profile that is much, much kinder to the tissue. So we can apply pressure if we want to, but we don't have to. We can slide this in and not push the tissue into uncomfortable areas. And so delivery to the patient is quicker simpler and less painful. Example of a patient that I treated where the patient presented with a tie base abutment and it was quite wide right at the osseous level. And I ended up replacing this with a custom base restoration with a much kinder emergence profile. And we can see the clinical images where when I removed the tie base restoration, the tissue was quite inflamed and not inflamed by cement because it was a very clean restoration. It was simply squeezing the tissue beyond what it could handle. So I replaced it with a custom base. And this image on the right of the screen shows the tissue after a few weeks. I removed my restoration 
took a photograph to show the change in the tissue health. It is much, much healthier and the patient's much more comfortable. The other limitation of a tie-based design is when you have a tilted placement of the implant, which does happen, particularly in the molar region, where it's hard to get the drill apparatus in a vertical position when placing the implant. Well, with a custom base, we are able to change the access channel so that it's in a much more opportune location for us, and we don't compromise our crowns that way. So the process is pretty simple. We're going to work in Serona Connect, and we're going to select where we want to have our restoration. In this case, we've chosen a central incisor and a molar. And we're going to choose our laboratory and who is going to receive this information. So the next step is to choose the scan body. And for the particular type of implant you are working with, in this case, a dense body implant, this is an osseo speed, I have chosen a particular scan body. And I hit click OK. Now, the program in Serona Connect is going to default to apply the scan body for each site chosen to be the same scan body. But in this case, I've got two different size implants. So I'm gonna go back in and make an edit. So I choose my first implant and I edit the size down from a 4.8 to a 4.2. Choose that appropriate scan body and click OK. Now I have the appropriate scan body for each implant. Now we might look at this and say, well, that's kind of a, an excessive amount of work. I've got to go back and do this. Well, you would have had to have chosen two different scan bodies anyway. But why this is a benefit is that there are times where we have multiple implants of the same dimension. So when we're going to order our abutments or make our scan, if we have multiple implants of the same dimension, we can go back, enter it. And in this case, I've got six implants that are a 4.2. I enter it once for those six implants. Now I've got scan bodies for all six. And all I have to do is enter the dimensions for the other implants that are not the same. So you choose which ones are duplicates, say in other words, the same di dimension, and you now have scan bodies for all those. And you just edit out what you need to for the others. So once done, we are ready to scan. So I'm gonna just show a quick little demonstration of scanning. I know most people have done this. Importantly, I want to scan the scan body architecture. So I want to get that flat surface on this one as an IO flow. It has a flat surface. And of course, I'm going to scan the rest of it as necessary and make sure that I've got a very nice reproduction of the scan body. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to trim away the overf overflow, what I would call overflow. It's what we would do if we had an impression, right? We have excess material. I'm going to do that with my scan. And the reason I'm doing this is that I'm going to order a 3D printed model, and I don't want a print of materials that are unimportant to the restoration of the, of the implant. So we're just gonna trim away stuff we don't need, bottom line. Once done, then I now have my completed scan, and I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna drag the image into the scan body box, and I'm gonna hit copy. And that's going to copy the exact scan into the scan body box. Next up, we're going to scan the opposing. Once that's completed, we're going to scan the patient's bite. Once the bite is completed and we get our checkbox, we are ready to go on to the process. So that is the basics of scanning. Now I just want to walk through this a little more carefully. And I'm going to do this on a model so that I'm not demonstrating my patient's uh, information. So I've scanned the upper, I scanned the scan body very cleanly, I trimmed away what I don't want. Now that I've got that, I drag that into the scan body box, hit copy, and now I've made a copy. I go through the next scan, which is the opposing, scan that, scan the bite, and then move into the model phase. Now in the model, I will look at this before I upload it because what I wanna look at is the access hole for this particular implant. If I think it's going to be a conflict with the aesthetics or the functional portion of the implant crown, I'm gonna make a mental note because I'm gonna tell my laboratory we might wanna use an angle 
screw access correction. So once done, I'm going to now log in and I'm going to order what I want. So I'm going to basically send this to the laboratory and telling them what I want to do. And there's some basic data you need to enter. In the gender box, we will choose one of the four. In the recipient, we choose who we want to receive this information. And we will type in whatever information we feel is appropriate. So in this case, I'm saying Atlantis custom paste and consider angled screw access. We give a return date and then we click submit our cart. And then once that's done, we commission it and it's off and running. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is you are going to receive an email saying that the information has been sent to the laboratory. The laboratory will then receive an order saying to go ahead and place the order for the abutments. So on the laboratory level, they will now be able to order the abutments. In this case, we have our two implants and we're asking, they are asking to hold the case because they're gonna want to design. Now there is an option just to say, let, the lab, let Atlantis design the abutment, but the laboratory has the expertise in designing what we want to achieve. So they're gonna go through this and order the necessary abutment, in this case, in Atlantis custom-based solution. They have an option of choosing gray or gold shaded. My particular choice is gold shaded. And then the next thing they're going to do is choose core file. Now they have an option here. They could have Atlantis make the crown. They could have Atlantis make a crown with a cutback, or they could choose a core file. And what a core file gives your laboratory is the opportunity to work on the finished restoration before actually receiving the abutment because the core file is the design of the abutment. So once that's done, they have an option of choosing angulated screw access, and they can choose it specifically for which implant they want to work with. So in this case, on the central incisor, we're asking them to choose that, and that's what they're going to do. Once this is done, they can decide if they want to order the printed models. Now, your laboratory may want to print their own models, and that's perfectly fine, or they might want Atlantis to do that for them. Once everything has been ordered, off it goes. And then in a short amount of time, they're going to receive a design from Atlantis. And this is the basic design with default as far as the margin and um, emergence profile um, contours, et cetera. The laboratory can then launch the 3D editor, go into the design phase, and from here, they can look at the opposing, they can look at the model, they can look at the abutment itself, they can alter the opacity of the images they're looking at. They can eliminate things they don't want at that moment, like the opposing or perhaps the actual model. They can look at how the crown is planned. That gives them an idea of how to plan the abutment. And then once they've got a feel for that, they can eliminate the crown. Anytime you can reactivate the image and see what you want to see. And then from here, the laboratory can modify the abutment as they would like. Make it larger, make it smaller, make it shorter, make it wider, move the margin, uh, apply pressure to tissue. And should they happen to go a little too far in a direction that cannot be manufactured, the image will turn red. And that simply requires that they back off on what they just did. And then once they're happy with it, good. Click it, it's good to go. So this is just an example of a few, just a few of the abutments that I've worked with through the last few years. I've had hundreds of these abutments made for me. And you'll note that everyone is different because everyone is completely custom for my particular patient's needs. Some margins are deep, some margins are short. Um, the laboratory will have a good idea of where to place the margins to get the best aesthetic view, but also to have the most retention for the final restoration. And then at that point, crowns can be made. Now, generally, I said my default is to do the gold shaded. In the past, I have, I have opted for the gray titanium in the most posterior areas. Today, I will tell you I do everything in gold shaded because 
if a crown is more translucent, we just want to have a prettier color coming through the crown. And as far as the clinical flow, when it comes back to me, whether it's a single unit or a very complex case, it's actually not complex because everything is still a single unit. So one or 11, it's the same thing. And what I like to do is to get the abutment, place some obturation medium into the access hole. So a little tape is placed. I place a very small amount of temporary cement onto the crown or into the crown, seat it, remove the excess, remove my, my little tape packing, and then go to the patient and do a try-in. What this allows me to do is to check my contacts, both interproximal and clusal, and make sure everything fits properly. It also allows me to look at the color, lets the patient look at the color. Perhaps I would want to use a different cement, maybe a more opaque, perhaps a more tooth color cement to alter the final restoration. Once everyone's happy, I will take it out of the mouth, separate it, clean it, polish it, re-cement it with the permanent cement, and then deliver. And so I have a chance to do a full try-in. You know, with a tie base, you can't do that. You really have to pre-cement them. So if there's a problem with contacts, you have to make a judgment on where to make the adjustment. If there is a problem with color, well, you're kind of stuck. You've got to send it back to the laboratory. For my practice, I don't need to do that. I can do all the try-in in a temporary cement with the custom base, then final cement it and go to delivery. And so this is what I've been able to do. Um, I, my patients have very healthy tissue. They have no excess overflow of cement. We have good color matching because I'm able to check all those things. We don't have open contacts because I can judge which contact needs to be adjusted when I'm doing it through the temporary cement. So it's been a workhorse for me and very, very successful. So Atlantis Custom Base, basically we do this. We scan, we upload it to a laboratory. A laboratory then can order and design the abutment, they'll receive a design, they can then custom design it with the 3D editor, order the abutment, they receive it, they're gonna make a final crown. At that point, they can decide or you can decide if the crown should be permanently cemented or sent to you in two pieces so that you can do the try and approach as I do. It's your choice, they both work and for me, this has been a great solution because it allows me to have completely custom, completely just dialed in restorations for my patients without the limitations that come with a stock abutment. So that is the workflow for the Atlantis Custom Base. Um, my favorite restoration to do. It's they're fun, they're easy to do with this approach. And I'd like to thank you for your time.